everyone. Happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. Uh, it's a time that we can relax and craft together. And I'm here for about an hour every evening. And I work on projects from beginning to end, so you can be part of the whole process along the way. You can ask your questions and just come and hang out with me. Uh, so you guys, last night we got cut off kind of sharply. My phone overheated again. I think it's actually, a, I don't think it's actually overheating. I think it's a Facebook integration situation. Uh, we're hoping to take care of that this weekend. We have a little bit of a plan, so we'll see how that goes. So hopefully we don't burn out tonight. We'll see. <laughs> But we were right in the middle of working on our strip piecing for the Orophil block of the month. So we're going to continue that tonight. I'm hoping that we'll finish up this side, and then I'm hoping we can actually finish up the whole rest of the side. So hopefully we will get all of the actual paper piecing, uh, um, the strip piecing done for this tonight. We'll see how it goes. We are literally mid-seam right now on the sewing machine. So I will flip you guys around and we'll get started on that again. There's information for this uh, block of the month below. This is the January block. We'll be working on it every fourth uh, week of the month. Uh, this is week one. So this is the first block, January's block, uh, and there'll be a new one released every month. And I, I am the July designer, so uh, that's why we're working on this quilt. I, I was just lucky to be part of the design team for this. So. Uh, you'll see mine in, uh, in July there. <laughs> and, oh, great. And you guys, I have just started receiving your koalas, your koala embroideries. Uh, again, we are stitching koalas, uh, for, uh, <laughs> I just thought I saw a spider. <laughs> I had to stop there for a sec. Uh, but we are stitching koalas for Australians for Animals and, uh, uh the money that we raise uh, from koala sales, koala pattern sales, and the quilt that we're going to auction, uh, all go to help koalas in need in Australia, um, that need medicine and shelter and everything still. Even though the fires are dying down a little bit, there is still a lot of help needed there. So, uh, I sent in the first donation today. I posted about that. So they are just very happy. You guys are amazing. And it's you guys is buying these patterns that is doing it. Uh, and check out the Penguin and Fish Crafters group to see all of the patterns so far. I will be posting. I'll sh I'll start sharing you got with you guys uh, the patterns, the koalas I receive, and showing them all together too. They are just so adorable together, and every single one is different. It is just very exciting, and I, it's exciting mail every day. <laughs> Get excited running to the mailbox every day at work, so uh, thanks again, you guys. The pattern link is below if you want to contribute still. Uh, I am still sending bundles out, even though we've done the, the stitch along. The stitch along is on YouTube right now if you want to follow along with that. Bundles are still available. The patterns are still available. Uh, it's all still there. And so we'll just continue donating. And I'll be sure to keep you guys updated on when we start the quilt as well. So thank you guys. You're awesome. All right. I'm going to flip you around and let's get sewing. Okay. So here is where we left off. Like I said, I am mid seam right here. So actually, I think right away, let's just scooch down. You know, today I'm going to lose the shoe. <laughs> uh, I was sewing yesterday with my shoes on, and that just feels so awkward. So I'm, I'm, I'm one shoe, one sock right now. We'll see how this goes. All right, we are on our second piece here. I'm just going to continue. We literally burnt out mid-seam. Mid I am just grabbing as I go the next piece. We are putting right sides together and then sewing that on. And if you missed out on the first, um, the start of this, everything is all up on 
on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, so you can definitely work on this block still. This is going to be a fun block of the month uh, because, it, first of all, it's only one a month, and it's kind of a large block. It's like a 12-inch block, so it's one a month. You're going to feel like you finished uh, something big and fun, and uh, there's no pressure to speed get one done every week or, or anything like that. Uh, because it's just one one a month and they're all going to be different different colors uh, there may be a theme of this dark gray uh, fabric the what I'm using as the as my border here there might be a theme of that going through the blocks but it is unknown so each designer got different colors of fabric. So this is the gray block. So each each month is going to be a different color scheme. This is gray this month. And uh, um, they're going to get, each designer got the colors for that. So this is gray. Uh, I don't know what next month is going to be. And I'm not going to reveal what my month color is yet. And then they also got that dark gray. So in theory, the designers will be using that dark gray in their designs too. They don't have to, but I, I, my theory is that that's what's gonna kind of connect all these colors together is this dark, dark gray. So that might be something to think about, but nothing set in stone. So there is no fabric requirements. There's no anything written down for that, for that yet at all because uh, it's a mystery what the blocks are going to be and they're all different colors. All right, I am doing these all at once. You can see I'm doing all four at once instead of one at a time just from us doing other kind of paper piecing type projects. It seems to be the quickest way to do it just doing them all at once instead of doing one uh, four times. All right, I'm going to, let's, let's bring this back up here again. That kind of works nice. My little pressing mat. All right, so we're going to give that piece that we just sewed on a little press. That kind of sets the seam and uh, um, it kind of sinks it, heats it up and sinks it into uh, the fabrics, I think. Uh, but then we're putting that on. Oh, hey. I think this is the last one on this side. <laughs> That's right, we were on the last one. So here we go, that is one side. Now we just need to mirror that on the other side here. So uh, one side done. In my head, I guess we had a few more to go, but nope. That's awesome. So we are gonna repeat the exact same sequence, but a mirror image. Oh, it's looking cute. And then, you know, eventually they'll go together like like this with a little a little border in between there. Ooh, they're gonna be pretty. I'm I'm excited for them. So we're gonna be working on this for the rest of the week. So Thursday and Friday yet. I think we're gonna gonna get real close to done tomorrow, which would be kind of awesome because then we have a free day on Friday, and I'm hoping. If we do have a free day, an open day, I would love to work on my mandala love embroidery a little bit more. The mandala love is the embroidery of the month, and I did not get it done last week when we when we all stitched it together, so I'd like to get going on that a little bit more. All right, so I still have I still have my pieces, my remaining pieces kind of lined up in largest to smallest here, and just to double check it is going to be the reverse of this. So this one and this, da, 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 da. so we got to go in that same order. So I, I'm going to grab the next longest pieces. Yep. So that's the mirror of this. So we're just rotating this and doing the same thing on this side. I'm going to just grab as I go and we will center it on there and soon we'll have, have this side all done. All right. To the machine. Oh, Gretchen, you're not, you're not finished with your uh, mandala love pattern either. Yeah, so that one was, uh, if you sewed the, if you stitched the koala one with us, 
The mandala love is a bit more time consuming. There's just a lot more stitches. It's not necessarily harder than the koala. It's just uh, a lot more, a lot more to it. So we did not get done. And just a reminder, it is going to uh, leave on on the on midnight on Friday. Gosh, that's only two days. <laughs> so there's two more days to order the mandala love pattern before it's taken off the website uh, indefinitely. It may eventually be a kit. I don't know, but for for now, it's just. It's just gonna go away and on February, February 1st at 12.01, <laughs> then uh, the, the new uh, embroidery of the month will, will replace the mandala and the bundles and, and all that. I really like the bonus item <laughs> uh, for, for next month. I think it's just, really sweet and cute so I hope you guys like it too but no more clues I'm, I'm gonna uh, it's a surprise till February 1st you're not finished with the mandala either oh I need to do the leaves and the koala oh fun all right here's our second one Something you might notice while you're stitching these, and I, I'm noticing it at least, since we have, um, since we're kind of sewing onto paper, the my feed dogs aren't gripping it in the same way that it, it grips fabric. So it's kind of sliding around a bit. So I'm sure my seam allowances aren't perfect by any means, uh, but I, I feel like I'm fighting a little bit to keep everything straight and it's because it's just it just wants to slip a little bit because of that paper so it's something to just pay attention to all right last one this is going quick 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 oh Gretchen you did oh that's awesome uh, Gretchen says she ordered candles from my Friend. She makes those fun candles. It's uh, natural Annie, Annie's essentials, natural Annie essentials, and uh, uh, she does those fun candles with the words on it uh, for the Swan embroidery of the month. That was December. That was her candle in there. They are so juicy and good smelling. Um. I am going to test that sometime, Terry. So Terry is asking, would thinner paper help? Uh, I'm going to try and get my hands on a phone book or something like that, and, and we'll try that at some point here. I suspect it might help the make it easier to tear the paper off later, but I'm not sure if that will really help. Um, in regards to it slipping or not. So I, I'd be curious about that. Oh, Gretchen says that uh, my friend who makes the candles has a, a sale going on right now for a bundle. That's awesome. Yeah, those candles really are the best. We've actually burnt out of a, a couple of ours, so I may be ordering um, some more from her again. Let me know if that's something that you guys would like me to stock in the shop. Like that might be kind of a fun thing to have on on penguin on the penguin and fish site. Uh, a couple of those, oop, a couple of those yummy candles, like the creating all the things candle. I like I like that. She puts these fun words on fun phrases on all of them. But yeah, I, I need to get more for us too. John really likes them in his his office too. <laughs> it makes it easier to be in the office and working, having them yummy smellies. Oh, her candle smelled so good. Yeah, she really did.
All right. Oof, this is just looking so pretty. Again, I don't think I would have, unless I was forced to by just having to pick from my stash, I don't think I would have purchased these fabrics to put together. And that's, that's the kind of the fun of working from my fabric stash is things go together that you wouldn't have thought of. It's just a fun process. Oh yeah, I can tell that this stripe isn't, it's a little thinner up here than down here, so, oh well. Uh, okay, so next up, again, I'm going, uh, we're, we're mirroring this side, but I have kind of them laid out so I can just grab. Oh, you're using Carol Dokes foundation paper. It's thinner. Oh, but so far not a lot of difference. Oh, interesting, Amy. So that's, that's, uh, that's an, a good observation. Yeah, I have not used anything for foundation paper, but just normal printer paper. Uh, so, so I don't know. I don't have a good knowledge of what else is out there, but we do enough of it here. Uh, with all these quilt alongs and stuff, we do enough of it that I should probably start looking into some different ways of doing it and then we can test them out. I like testing different products here, testing different techniques. Uh, and letting you know what I what I think about them. So yeah, that might be a good thing to play around with. Different foundation papers. Okay, again, let's just place as we go. You know what? I better double check. <laughs> just double checking that we're the mirror image. Okay. Boop boop. Yep. We're fine. <laughs> Get scared. If not, it'd still be pretty. But I mentioned yesterday that I saw someone online who, as a scrap quilt, just had like squares of foundation paper just ready to go, all the same size. And then she, when she'd have a strip like this, she would just sew it on a paper, and then she'd trim them all to the size of the paper so they were all the same. But it was still like this improv pieced thing. I think that would be a, a fun way to do an improv piece, an improv quilt, and another good way to use up scraps and excess stuff. Oh, you buy newsprint that comes on reams? Oh, because you like the paper piece with that. Oh, interesting. I do have some newsprint. I could give that a try. Uh, the other reason I like the just the printer paper is most of the time when we're doing foundation paper piecing, I mean, this is more of like strip piecing, but for foundation paper piecing, it's the same general idea as what we're doing here. But you usually have to print out a design. So you're printing out all these lines and shapes that you're actually gonna sew along those lines. Uh, I like the printer paper because I can print, it's like the right size for a printer and I can print the design right away. So if I get like some newsprint or something else, I'll have to make sure I can run it through the printer um, and cut it down to size. So that might be a little, that'll be an extra step, but I'd still like to try it. Ooh, the strips make cute Christmas stockings. That would be a beautiful idea. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? I, I'm like, this feels weird. I have two on top of each other there. That would have been, that would have been bad. Oh, let's get these threads. I'd like to snip those right away so they're not in my way later. This long, Strip is kind of getting in the way, so I'm just putting it under my foot before I get going. Oh, newsprint works in the printer. Oh, that's good to know. All right, last one. I have a light tissue paper. I wonder how well that would hold up. So people say that they like uh, 
they like the thinner paper. I'm a little worried about it tearing too prematurely, so I don't know. It's time to do some tests, I think. Time to... The questions are, are coming to my brain, um, and uh, <laughs> they need to get uh, figured out. So that needs to... I think that's a good next... Uh, Next crafty purchase, we'll try some different types of foundation paper. All right, snipping these guys, cruising along. Again, I'm just putting a warning out there. I hope our stream uh, goes the entire time tonight. Our phone, my phone for these. Uh, on Facebook Live has been like conking out, and uh, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't do that tonight. But if it does, uh, I'm hoping to solve that this weekend. So um, that's good. <laughs> oh, Teresa, yes, the sound of the machine is totally soothing. I I completely agree. That's one of the most relaxing parts of these, I think. Uh, and what's kind of neat is every once in a while I'll break down. Uh, or bring out a different vintage machine. I just have all vintage machines, basically. Uh, this one's from the 70s. Uh, this is my oldest machine, or the the um, the latest date machine. All my, all the other ones have been made earlier. So this is the youngest machine, actually. But they all have just a little different sounds. And actually, we've gotten so used to the sound of it here that we can almost tell when it needs a new needle or when the bobbin is almost out because it makes more of a like a kerchunking noise. <laughs> uh, it starts kerchunking along. Uh, it's subtle but every once in a while it just sounds just a hair difference and we usually run out of bobbin or need to change the needle and it, then it goes away. Oh you use vellum on complex paper piecing patterns. Oh that's interesting. Okay, uh, next up are these guys. Let's double check. Middle, boop, boop, boop. Yep, we're at the light colored ones. Just three more. So a few of you guys like the Carol Dope papers. Okay, I will look into that. I haven't, I, I mean, I haven't heard of those before, but it's not like I know all the names for um, foundation paper piecing products. So I will, I will look into that. I do love it though. Paper piecing is just such a good way of having a magically uh, intricate quilt, like absurdly intricate. And uh, any layman, like how I was when I fell in love with it. Um, ooh, what's happening here? but would look at one of those quilts and just be like, oh my God, how did that quilter get so detailed, so um, so intricate of pieces? It just seemed like magic. <laughs> you know, you could do full, like you do like a full realistic looking giraffe or something if you wanted with foundation paper piecing. It was just, just kind of cool. So I fell in love with it for that. Um, and it, the process is just really relaxing once you get how to do it. Wow, this is really feeling weird now. Like it's not wanting to grip. I wonder if we have to check our feed dogs again. So remember we, I brought this uh, machine in to get the feed dogs released. The feed dogs are those little grippies at the bottom and they help pull the fabric along, um, you're able to just make them go all the way down. And uh, that's good for if you're doing like free motion quilting where you don't want anything to grip and pull, you just want it free. And these never went down. They've been locked up probably since the 70s. Um, oh, this is just not even pulling along here now. Yeah, we've lost our... So when, when they fixed it, they have a tendency to stay down. So I'm going to just pop this open here. And I think I just had to 
push up. Now, do you see this pop up a little bit? I just have to push up this little dial, or this little lever. I'm hoping that kind of gets it out of its funk here. Let's see if this works again. Ugh, this could be not fun. Yeah, we might have lost our feed dogs. Boo! So I'm physically pushing it up with my finger right now. Maybe it'll jog it. Oh, I don't think it's working still. Ugh! This might mean I gotta switch machines for the rest of this. Let's see if I can free motion this a little bit. So I'm going to make the pressure. I think that's why I had the pressure of my foot not so hard now that I'm now that I remember that. So up here, if I push this down, this pops up. So uh, it's on level one right now. You can see one through four. Uh, level one means it's putting a lot less. The foot is putting hardly any pressure at all on the fabric. So. Uh, like it's a very light touch, let's let's call it. So that works great for uh, really thick piles of fabric. You want this to be able to be up a little higher. Um, but for just a little piece of fabric like this, I want it to push all the way down. But now that I'm remembering that my machine has this issue, uh, I can't have the pressure so much that it pushes the feed dogs down. So uh, I think that's why I had this at three. I always used to have it all the way down, and I think that just actually pushed them down again. So I need to have it at three, which is right there. So I'm one, one nubbin up there. So let's see. Let's see if that helps again. I forgot all about that. All right, so I'm going to push it up. Let's get the next piece and see if that kind of did the job. I can't have it up too much um, more than that three because then there won't be enough pressure on the foot here. It won't, it won't hold the fabric down. Ah, so fixing that problem of having the feed dogs work properly uh, made the whole thing work poorly. <laughs> uh, so all right, it looks like it, it feels like it's working again. Ooh, a little bit. It kind of feels like it's working. Once we get off of this paper, I'm hoping it'll work a little bit better too. I am sort of pulling it through, which is not what you should do. So we're gonna push them up a little bit here. And I haven't found a way to kind of keep that, keep the pressure on this so they stay up. Oh, and I don't want to go to the fix-it guy again. Maybe, I mean, Leslie, maybe that's the issue that needs oil again, but I think it's a mechanical thing. Um, I don't know. Oh, well, oh, that's good, Teresa. Well, technically, you uh, if you're doing, like, denim or le leather, you might want it a little lighter, but it has to do with how... And I didn't know that either. I didn't know that until like a couple months ago, anything about that nubbin. <laughs> but um, it has to do with how hard this foot is like pushing down. And so on the leather or, or denim, you might actually want it a little um, higher up just because in theory you're going to work with some big thickness there. So having it higher up would um, help reduce or like help you know, have a, enough space to hold that. Yeah, I'm not having, this is not completely right yet, but we are able to sew still, and I want to just keep sewing the night. Um, we'll see how this, see how it works once we switch to the background. Background uh, fabric, or the border fabric, I mean. Yeah, um, Teresa, get some scrap fabric and uh, try and sew like some some lines with that fabric 
at the different levels and you'll you'll of that button and you'll kind of you'll you'll feel it you'll feel um what's happening there leslie that's exactly what's happening happening the feed dogs aren't staying all the way in the up position uh, unless i push that lever up um underneath and it, it shouldn't like it should i can feel it click up a little bit but it shouldn't it should always be in that all the way up position and just move with it so it, it has gotten too loose it almost seems like all i should be able to do is like tighten something and it'll stay up there but i haven't figured out what that something is <laughs> um i have i've dug around in there and and we'll see how it goes oh yes teresa let me know how that goes if you if you do that that's that'd be cool i'd love to hear Oop, i'm like getting ahead of myself here i gotta press let's do that first But I seriously didn't know about that button. I've had this, I've been sewing with this machine for ages and I don't know, something came up and then someone here mentioned that and I didn't know what they were talking about and finally figured out what they were doing and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that's what that thing did. <laughs> so it's like, oh, another function that I can use to affect what I'm doing, like more control, I just feel, uh, the more I use this machine, the more I try and open it and fix things and learn about it, like the more control I feel like I have, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I feel like that too, Leslie. I just don't, it's, <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen though. It's kind of one of these weird places where <laughs> there's like zero customer service and it's just these like you know, a bunch of electricians or something behind the desk who like don't know how to talk to people. It's just kind of a weird place. But in the past they've done an okay job. So the more I learn about my, my machine, the less I have to, um, the less I need to use them. Cause now I can clean it and oil it and do all that myself. Um, the last time I brought it in, it was for that specific thing that I couldn't figure out. But yeah, I don't know if this continues, persists for sure. I'm sure we're gonna have to deal with it. So I'm gonna just push that up again. You can see it being pushed all the way up. So it should stay up there. And then there's another level lever that pushes it down when it stitches. And that's what lowers uh, the feed dogs and stuff. But for some reason, it's like, this one's going down and this one's not staying. It's like that. <laughs> and then it's staying too low. So that's, maybe, maybe it's just an oil problem. Um, maybe it is, maybe this weekend it's time to break this open again and oil the whole thing. Maybe that'll help. One of those annoying deals. We just have these two rows to do yet. Oh, see, now it's grabbing. But once we get to the paper, the paper doesn't want to pull as much. Like right now I'm pulling it again. Oh well. We'll make it through today, how about that? Well, at least, uh, at least we're sewing onto a foundation, so all these tiny stitches will make it easier to pull this apart later. But yeah, this is pretty annoying. I am actually like pulling it through the machine. Let's pop that up. I'm just gonna leave this open so I can keep popping it up. So dumb. So it's always gotta be something, huh? Yeah, when you're sewing, you shouldn't have to pull your fabric through at all. Um, oh, I'll have to look at that, Leslie. I'll have to see if, if, if he has anything to say. It's tough sometimes to find a, a YouTube help for vintage machines. And, you know, they're all a hair different. Um, so, yeah, I'll check that out. Oh, just get under there. Wow, 
yeah, it's not pulling at all now. All right, my finger is literally holding up the presser foot right now. How ridiculous is that? But look how good it's supposed to work. <laughs> all right, not the presser foot, it's holding up that little lever here, if you can see. But dang, now that worked nicely, right? <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be. I know I should, so uh, Noeline says, bring out the, the steampunk. Uh, she'll rip through it. So I have this I have this sewing machine that we've been calling the steampunk sewing machine. It's like a black crinkle. Um, it looks like just black matte steel or something. It's just really kind of cool. It's from the 40s. It's a Kenmore from the 40s. I'm literally holding this up again. I mean, that's doing the trick. I mean, look at it. Pull that fabric. It's holding the, the paper. It's holding everything well. <laughs> look at my finger go crazy, though. <laughs> oh, that's not how we should do it. All right, we're going to make it through this, though. Yeah, something's not tight. The only issue is there's nothing really to tighten. If you open it up and look underneath, it doesn't, it doesn't look like I can affect things. So that might be fun to open up this maybe that's what our Friday will be so if we get this done on Friday maybe that's what we'll do instead of sewing we'll open it up oil it clean it although I have done that before and haven't figured it out ah. vintage machines that's for sure vids on machine repairs for hours yeah so if I um so yeah maybe I'll do some research uh and maybe we can figure it out But boo, right? <laughs> I mean, at least I know what part is having trouble. So, uh, you know, it's not a complete mystery. I just, the mystery part is how to actually fix that part. You vote for Mandala. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling that too. I'm, I'm like, man, I think I'd rather finish the Mandala and then just, I don't know, switch machines. Bring this in or something. All right, my machine just got, my my uh, screen just got a little dark now, so hopefully we don't cut out, but I will just go. A spring or something, oh, that would hold the lever in place has come off. Oh, maybe that's it. Ah, it might just be, maybe I just want the guy to fix it, I don't know. Uh, like I said, I have opened it up and I've tried to fix it, or I've tried to see what there is to see to fix it, and I'm coming up with just not knowing. So uh, it might, I'll do some research again. I don't think I've done a ton of research. And uh, maybe we'll figure out. Oh, that's an idea. I could work on it on Saturday, but I think I'm, I got, I got some stuff that I'm gonna be working on on Saturday. On Sunday though, I am hoping to, hoping to work on this, this uh, Facebook setup a little bit more. So hopefully we won't burn out anymore. Hopefully it looks a little bit nicer. Um, you know, if we get to it on Sunday. Oh yeah, Super Bowl project. <laughs> All right, oh, Aaliyah's, Aaliyah's asking what happened. So my machine hasn't been pulling the fabric through again. And remember, oh, I did bring it in because now I can lower it. So if I click this button over here, I can lower the feed dogs. Did you see them just go down? So now I can sew with them staying down, which is awesome, right? It's great. I want that ability. I didn't have that ability before because they were locked. So they were able to unlock it by oiling it a ton and blowing hot air on it and just really working on it. And they really had to crank on it, like getting, you know, screwdrivers in there and, and cranking on it. And so now in theory it functions, but it's almost too loose. Uh, so, I'm finding that I have to actually hold it up. Actually, I'm gonna put my button on top all the way down and hold it up and see how well that feeds. This is gonna be our last piece for the day. So, um, I think we can bear with it a little bit longer. Yeah, so I'm literally, I think you guys can see I'm holding up this lever, which is moving as each stitch goes, which is moving my whole hand here. <laughs> This is not 
not the right way to sew. Uh, that could be to Barbara one hammer hit two. I mean, it could be. It could be. I mean, literally, that could be what it is. One hammer hit too many, because it it is that sort of thing. I mean, these are these are mechanical machines that if they get rusted solid or you know greased solid or whatever, they do require like some handling like that. These old ones. So that that literally could be the problem. Maybe something just got bent a little. I don't know. Oh, just one of those things. Oh look, and I got some funny little uh, pleat in here for me trying to pull it along here. Ah well. That'll be a good history of this block. This is that when that I couldn't use my machine. That's being weird. Yeah, I'll I'll try and check it out and Otherwise, I think it's time to bring it in again, maybe. All right, last piece for the night, at least. Then I don't have to deal with the machine. <laughs> uh, we'll see how it works tomorrow. Uh, luckily, this isn't the end of the world. I can sew with, with my hand down here. Obviously, I don't want to do that forever. But just for one more day of sewing, if we can do that, then, then I can manage that, I think. Again, crazy, not ideal, but at least we have a, a little bit of a fix for now. I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to get a little closer down here so you can see what I'm talking about a little bit more. There. So here it's a little dark. Um, there we go. But this right here. Uh, so this goes down and up, and that helps move the feed dogs up, and I have to actually hold that up because it gets stuck in the down position. Just a little too low, like not all the way. Oh, now, it, now it's kind of staying. And there's this other little lever here, but it's this thing, me pushing this up. That's what I'm doing to make it work. <laughs> all right. Uh, Tamara, this is a 1970... I believe. I think it's a 1974 Kenmore, Sears Kenmore sewing machine. This was my mom's uh, college machine. That I have acquired. Alright, let's press these guys. Oh, Barbara, that has come with practice. Uh, Barbara says, I like that you'll not be put off by a little glitch. You're a great example of resilience. That has come little by little with learning more and more about this machine and uh, just deciding, okay, we are going to figure out how to oil this ourselves and just taking one unknown thing at a time instead of tackling it all all at once. <laughs> I wouldn't even know what to tackle all at once. Oh, this is looking pretty though. So tomorrow, actually we got some time yet tonight. Man, I think we can start cutting these tonight. Ha <laughs> wow. Um, still uh, with the, this uh, sewing machine thing, I mean, we still, we still cruised on this. Um, you know, it does slip on the paper a little bit, but when I was holding that up, it really didn't slip as much. So I don't know, maybe it's less the paper and more the machine not holding it. <laughs> there you go, Debbie. All right, back. <laughs> yes, so we froze for a sec there. It did the thing again. It, it did the temperature warning thing, but uh, this time it didn't conk all the way out. It only conked halfway out. <laughs> so we are back. Uh, and now it's probably fine. It, we're probably not going to have that issue. It, it, it's literally not my phone. It is a Facebook to iPhone flaw of some sort uh, with a new, a new update. But we are recording again. 
So I am, since we do have like 10 minutes left, I am going to move along, along with this. But yes, we are back. Thanks, you guys, for sticking with me here. Uh, again, I'm hoping we will resolve this this weekend. So, okay, we're good to go here. So, um, and, and if it's weird, uh, or if you've logged out already, which, you know, you wouldn't know because <laughs> I'm saying it now, but I will, I will, um, be, um, I will be going back, or I will be putting this on to YouTube again. Uh, no, Aline, I have a Samsung. The Samsung is actually the reason I had to get an iPhone. The Samsung would burn out in like 20 minutes. <laughs> so the, um, my Samsung is my normal phone and I have, like, I had to get an ex extra iPhone, an iPhone like specifically for this, which is kind of ridiculous, right? But yep. Tried the Samsung. Um, okay, using a square ruler with a 45 degree line, I'm going to use my favorite one here, this OmniGrid one with this 45 degree line, uh, going diagonally through the center, square up the top block, trim the block to, okay, four and a half square, keeping that 45 degree line always center over fabric A, that's that middle one. Repeat to make four identical blocks. Okay, so we're making four and a half inch Four and a half. Yep, four and a half inch squares here. So let's get my cutting glove and uh, uh, the scissors. Yes, so tomorrow I will be putting the border on. I probably won't finish squaring these up tonight. Uh, I think maybe we'll just do this one. Maybe we'll get one more done so you can see how it's done tonight uh, since we do have a little bit of time left. But tomorrow we will definitely I'm hoping to finish tomorrow, honestly. So tomorrow we will be sewing the border on. My finger might be underneath there holding up that little lever uh, <laughs> again, but uh, I am hoping that we can do that. So this is kind of interesting. I think wherever I cut and I flip it around to the four and a half inches, I think these will be centered still. This is such kind of a, I'm going to just go with it. Let's just see. So I'm going to just cut. I'm, I'm, that middle line, I am putting that diagonal, I'm just kind of estimating. I'm putting that diagonal right on here. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's get out. Let's get out the fun uh, rotating cutting mat. Um, this one kind of rotates around, so that's going to make this just a tiny bit easier. For things to stay in place. Obviously you don't need that. You can just pick up the block and rotate it, but it's kind of fun. All right, so I'm gonna go, let's go like right there. So one thing I am looking at when I go four and a half inches here, uh, it is still covering this block. So you don't want to accidentally, I don't know, somehow go somewhere where the four and a half is not within our block anymore. So I'm looking at that. Let's just bite the bullet and do this. So, all right. We're going to go down here closer. I can see my paper back here. I'm going to go closer to the paper. If this is not a good idea, someone scream. But we could turn it over. I kind of like, I want to just see the fabric here. So the block, the blocks that we cut, the paper blocks, those were actually five inches, so we're not matching up the paper. Um, we're cutting this down to four and a half. So it's actually a different different size, so we don't have to worry too much about that. Look at these fun pieces, like little stairs. All right, so now I'm gonna lift, lift this up. We're gonna just rotate it. And now, since I have those two, now I'm gonna put the, um, I'm gonna still put my diagonal line on here, but I'm gonna put this on the four and a half inch mark. So, uh, so diagonal first, trying to match that up. So this, this ruler has like a nice line. You can really see that four and a half, I always have to count, but there we go. So our, our blocks are getting much smaller, aren't they? Oh, this is gonna be pretty. So I think I'm pretty well lined up here and on that diagonal. And now, now it's almost less about the diagonal and more getting our four and a half 
inches on, on both sides. Cutting at an angle, I think, works a little bit better for this. Try not to move. All right, I think we got it. Yeah, so there is quite a bit of paper, or quite a bit of um, fabric left over. I think um, maybe there was a little excess than what we needed, but that helps us if we make a mistake. But oh my god, look how magically clean and perfect that looks. That is the magic of uh, like a foundation paper piecing type thing too, is it just looks, I mean, look at the difference. This just looks, this looks cool, but it looks completely unfinished compared to this. Like the leap from here to here, as far as how finished it looks is just so much, I think. Oh, this is going to be so pretty. Oh, I love this. Okay. Um, let's see. I think we have time to keep going. Let's do another one. I know this is kind of the scary part, Teresa. <laughs> this is kind of the like, ee, we have to cut this thing down and we worked on this for a long time. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm sure you can tell I'm a little freaked out and I like measure eight times and check the diagonal a bunch of times and uh, <laughs> but we're getting it cutting slow I'm trying not to move all right let's rotate that we might actually uh, finish uh, finish these tonight we have tons of time this is going quick so we can just uh might as well do the other two. Why bother not? Then we can put all this stuff away, clean up a little. Oh my god. Okay, four and a half. Four and a half. Freaked out for a sec. This is, we're cruising. So once once I'm done here, I want to try and lay it out quick, just so we can kind of peek at what it'll be like. Like peek what it'll look like with the borders. Ooh, this is fun. Look at this border. This would be a cool block, like to put this on white or something. It's kind of like a, a top or a, or a rocket ship almost. I don't know. I like it. Okay, four and a half. I really do like these rulers though. Um, they have like thin lines, thin little dots. I feel like I can see everything that I'm doing. So I definitely recommend these Omnigrid uh, rulers. All right, that is three. Got some puzzles hiding on this one. All right, one more. Let's do it. Oh, I just, it's just amazing to me how magically finished it looks just by trimming off all this excess. It's just exciting. And I forget about that. It's like a, a fun surprise. Like, oh yeah. I remember it looks, starts to look like really fun and finished at this stage. Right. I feel like I say oh all right a lot. Like I gotta I gotta pump myself up, like alright, I'm ready. <laughs> oh thanks Leslie! Yeah, I'm like in the contrast of these fabrics too. I think it's going to be really pretty. I want to see what it looks like with that dark red border fabric. I'll do that in a sec here. Oh, you guys, we still have to take all the papers out. So that, that will actually take some time tomorrow. Uh, one of those steps that I forget about that takes a little while. We'll take all the paper out of the back. And then, um, then we'll be ready to sew them together. So all right, let's let's see what this looks like. I'm gonna move all this scrap out of the way. Okay, so they all go to the center. Like 
like the dark, the dark, oh my gosh, look how pretty it is. All the dark bits go to the center. I think our sash is probably a little wider than that. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew these two shorty pieces on. So that will go here. There and here. I think that's kind of fun. And then we will get these middle guys in. Oh, I guess it's just the one. And uh, then we will have, I'm going to get you guys up a little taller here. Oh, the dots look like water droplets. That's cool. So I don't know if these go on the side or the top and bottom. I'll have to look at the instructions. But then we got our side ones, and ooh, it is gonna be fun. All right, I, look how much it, it frames up those little pieces. I think that's neat. I mean, this outside fabric maybe is a little weird, but I think it'll be fun once it's in the quilt a little bit more. It is a little goofy, but I'm, I'm committed. I'm committed to the weird, goofy fabric. I like it. <laughs> so it's kind of this weird fabric with with windows of this quilting fabric, but I'm excited. I think they'll be fun. And I like some of these other kind of colors coming with in here. Yay, we got, we got so far tonight, you guys. I did not, I was not expecting to get this far at all. So this is, I'm super stoked. So tomorrow, uh, the plan is we have to take out all these papers. That'll take a little bit of time, especially since we have four. But then it's just sewing these guys. I think there's still a pretty good chance that we could finish tomorrow. That would be so fab because then we can embroider some more on Friday. All right, you guys, I'm going to flip you around. All right, that's true. The outside, Nolene says the outside of the square adds texture. That's, that's a good point. I do like some texture in a quilt. Oh, with quilting we might want to play that up even more. Like if, if when we finish the front of the quilt, if it really does look like that gives extra texture, maybe we want to play that up a little bit more. We could do some quilt ties. Uh, I don't know. There's, there's opportunity there. <laughs> so awesome. You guys, uh, thanks again for sticking with me when we burnt out there for a sec. And, uh, this is great. I'm having fun, fun with this block so far. Uh, there is information on on uh, this stitch along below here, and there's still that opportunity to win uh, three packs of three, like the color block or the uh, the color builder thread bundles from Aurafil. Three pretty colors come in a box, and you have a chance to win three boxes of those every single month. So you just have to make the block and post a picture on uh, their page, on their blog post that talks about it. And then you're entered to win this three sets of three um, different ones, three sets of three different ones of these of uh, Orville Builder Blocks. That's like 120 plus dollars worth of thread. So uh, might as well give it a go uh, trying to win that. And you have a chance to win every single month. So if you do keep working on this quilt, we're going to be working on it the fourth week of every month. Um, there's a lot of opportunity there to, to win. So give it a go. And uh, all right. Thanks, everyone. I will get this up on YouTube right now. And I will see you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Good night.